Number theory is a very interesting subject that you can learn on your own once you know how to write proofs. You can try to learn it on your own without proof writing skills, but you're going to have a hard time. Even then, even when you know how to write proofs, it's honestly still pretty tough to learn on your own. And I speak from experience because I actually never took a course on number theory. Not once in my life have I had an actual course on number theory. So what I did was, as the collector of math books, I bought several number theory books. And this is one I've had for quite some time. All the number theory I know I've learned from these books via self-study or just from other courses like abstract algebra. I've taken several courses on abstract algebra and it comes up there quite a bit. This is an older book. It's called Elementary Number Theory. It's the second edition. It's written by Underwood Dudley. And this one has a price tag on it. It says $45. I did not pay $45 uh, for, for this book. I paid a lot less than that. Uh, I don't know how much I paid, but it's, it's been a while. But I definitely paid uh, less than, than $45. Hard to get those price tags off. I always hate that. I feel like they're damaging the book. You know, it's a collectible. I have to be careful when I open this book because someone actually wrote their phone number in it and their email. I don't know why they did that. Yeah, there's a phone number and an email. So, got to keep that out of the video. <laughs> so, I don't know who did that, but yeah, look at this. It's falling apart. This is one of the cons of used books. Sometimes you get stuff like that happening. My copy of Dummit and Foot is falling apart. Really tragic. Here you see the copyrights. Pretty old book, right? 69 and 78. So 69 must be the first edition. And then here are the topics uh, in this book. Very standard, by the way. So if you were to take a course in college today, you could, in theory, use this as a reference or as a supplement. By the way, some of these things you learn in other classes, uh, like discrete math, for example, uh, section three, I, I saw a little bit of this in a discrete math class, which is something you would take if you were, say, a computer science major. Integers unique factorization, linear diophantine, diophantine equations, congruences, linear congruences, Fermat's and Wilson's theorem, the division of an integer, perfect numbers, Euler's theorem and function, primitive roots, quadratic congruences. I just want to say something here on the pronunciation. I used to always say Euler, and I think that sounds so much cooler, but unfortunately it's not pronounced Euler, it's pronounced Euler. It always makes me think of like Texas for some reason. Like, yep, it's Euler's theorem, you know. Oil and Texas go together for some reason in my mind. But I wish it was Euler, but no, no. I guess you can say Euler if you want to, but people might, might, uh, might make some comments. Quadratic reci re recipro re reciprocity. You can make comments on my pronunciation. Numbers and other bases. Duodecimals, decimals, Pythagorean triangles, infinite descents, and for math conjecture sum of two squares, sum of four squares, we have an equation there, bounds for pi of x, formulas for primes, additional problems, proof by induction in the appendix, some computer problems, and then some other things here. You have some answers to selected odd-numbered problems and comments on selected odd-numbered problems and answers to selected extra. So you have a lot of different varieties of answers. Let's go straight to the back of the book and see what that is because that's pretty rare to find in books at this level. So 227, 231, and 238. Let's go back there right away. Solid book, by the way, good quality pages, old school. So some factor tables here, some references, and then here we have answers to selected exercises. These are some of the answers in the back of the book here, as you can see. So not many, or right? you just get some. So just some, some short answers here. And then answers to selected odd-numbered problems. So let's see, 1, 3, 11. So here it says, yeah, so this is 1 and 5, 9, 2. 3, yeah, so it's a little bit different, 2. Yep, and then here we have, let's keep going, comments on selected odd number problems. So you have all kinds of help in the back of the book here uh, for, for the exercises. Let's jump to the beginning of the book so you see how it reads. And you'll find that number theory books are very gentle usually at the beginning, uh, but they get progressively harder pretty quickly. 
mathematics exists mainly to give us power and control over the physical world. But it has always been so fascinating that it was studied for its own sake. Yes, mathematics for the sake of mathematics. That is, that is the reason I studied math, because I liked it. I didn't study it for any applications. Uh, I took a pure track as an undergrad, so I took a lot of pure mathematics courses. Number theory is that sort of mathematics. It is of no use in building bridges, and civilization would carry on much as usual if all of its theorems were to disappear. Nevertheless, it has been studied and valued since the time of Pythagoras. The greatest of mathematicians, Carl Frederick Gauss, called it the queen of mathematics. And everybody's mathematics is what the contemporary mathematician Ivan Neven calls it. The reason for its appeal is that the subject matter, numbers, is part of everyone's experience. And the things that can be found out about them are interesting, curious, or surprising. And the ways they are found can be delightful. Clean lines of logic with sustained tension and satisfying resolution. Yes, yes, the feeling you get when you write a beautiful proof and it all makes sense. And number theory proofs can be quite elegant. Here it talks a little bit about the integers. The subject matter of number theory is numbers, and a large part of number theory is devoted to studying the properties of the integers. That is the numbers, these are the integers. Usually the integers are used merely to convey information. Three apples, $32, 17 x squared plus nine, with no consideration of their properties. Here you have some exercises. Here it talks about division. It's our first real piece of mathematics. We will study, we will say that A divides B, written A divides B, if and only if there is an integer D such that AD is equal to B. So if that definition um, seems a little cryptic, you can take this and say B is equal to AD or DA, it doesn't matter, because multiplication of integers is commutative. And you can say it a different way. You can say A divides B if and only if B is a multiple of A. So this equation, you know, if, if there is an integer D such that AD equals B, means that D, uh, sorry, means that B uh, is a multiple of A, right? So B is a multiple of A. So if A divides B, B is a multiple of A. And I feel that if you know what, you know, when you say B is a multiple of A, that is a little more clear. And so I feel like you can make it synonymous with A divides B and it allows you to write the proofs a lot better. Uh, it, just, it just gets it flowing a little bit easier. And here's a simple um, proof. Show that if A divides B and B divides C, then A divides C. Uh, this is, this is the, the transitive property of, of division, and this is an easy one too. Here's a lemma. If D divides A and D divides B, then D divides the sum A plus B. So you start the proof by supposing that D divides A and D divides B. That means that A is a multiple of D and B is a multiple of D. So you have these two equations, and then you just add them up, A plus B, because you have to see if D divides A plus B. In other words, is A plus B a multiple of D? So that's what he does here. Good work, Underwood. And you can see he's done some, he skipped some steps because he factored out the D from the DQ and the DR here. And so you see now A plus B is a multiple of D, right? Because Q plus R is an integer, okay? So this would mean that D divides A plus B. Now, he, he, so you could have said a lot more here. So it's not the easiest book, and you're going to find that that's the case with most math books, right? Most math books aren't going to uh, provide every single little detail, and there's reasons for that. Um, you know, the books want to be clear, and they also want students to learn and stuff, I guess, and think for themselves, but I think it's more about keeping the proofs clean, keeping the books relatively short and elegant, uh, you know, providing a good book. Some books, you know, certain books are better for beginners. This one is good for beginners, and I think it's a solid book for self-study because it has so much help uh, in the back of the book. So you can see the beginning is very easy. It starts off pretty simple, but you still have to know how to write proofs. So if you don't know how to write proofs, um, you're, you're kind of out of luck with, with something like number theory. But yeah, it's a cool course. I, I say if you have the opportunity to uh, take a course in college, where you can study number theory, I definitely recommend you do. I never was able to because it always conflicted. Like it came down to like one semester, it was like topology or number theory. And topology was required. Number theory was always an elective. It typically is an elective. 
so you don't have to take it. You can get a math degree and never study number theory formally. Um, so yeah, prime number theorem. Nice. Big stuff, big stuff. I'm going to give it a whiff here. You can see someone else uh, put in a lot of effort. This was not me. Um, they worked through all of these exercises. Someone else did all these. But pretty cool. Yeah, I wonder if it's the person whose phone number is in the book. <laughs> I am not going to call them or email them. That's just weird. Anyways, I'll leave a link in the description to this book if I can find it in case you want to check it out. It's probably pretty inexpensive and it's a solid book. It's a pretty good book that can help you learn number theory. Also, if you found any value in this content, feel free to hit subscribe if you want to. And as always, if you want to learn math, uh, I have courses. They're on my website, mathsorcer.com or freemathvids.com. They're actually on the Udemy platform. But if you get them, either use the links from my website or from the description of any of my videos. It helps me greatly. And I've got tons of courses there. So yeah, I hope it's been helpful. Keep doing mathematics.